over to you. Uh, thank you, thank you very much. Um, I let me start by saying that uh, uh, what happened yesterday, um, you know, is 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 a great thing because in this country there's been a narrative that I've always myself found opportunistic and uh, historical, the narrative that uh, the two factions, that the two ruling class factions, <clears throat> within them, there is one that is a lesser evil. There are people, academics, uh, you know, uh, politicians and others, who, who basically advance this narrative whenever there are elections. That uh, uh, of the two factions, the less choose the lesser evil, and I think it's uh, it's unacceptable because if it, who chooses between evil, it's it's <laughs> nobody chooses you know between evil. And <clears throat> what happened yesterday is what we have been saying all along that. You know, these two factions and their political parties are basically birds of the same political feather, okay? And they, uh, they come together when, when, when their class is, is, uh, is, is, is challenged. And that's, that's what has happened. So I hope going forward, you know, this narrative that sees the various factions and these factions are grounded on monetization and uh, ethnicity. Uh, that's how you know they organize uh, politics, and they also share uh, these these uh, um, values. Well, they are not values, evils of uh, you know corruption, you know uh, uh, stealing resources, uh, wasting resources, and. Uh, we're talking about we're talking about a dictatorship that is going to be 61 years old in December, okay? And I think you remember there was a time when Moi said that, well, Kano will rule you for 100 years. They have already ruled us for 61. The people who you saw a meeting yesterday. They are orphans, you know, of the Kanu dictatorship. There is not a single one of them, uh, you know, that can claim that they are not part of that 60, 61 year old, uh, you know, dictator dictatorship. So, you know, uh, Hillary was right when he talked. I don't know whether it's Hillary or somebody else. I, I guess it was Kingston when he talks of self-preservation and survival, okay? Those are great words about classes, you know, that they come together for self-preservation and, 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 and survival. Uh, <clears throat> so that's, that's important to know. And the other thing that uh, made me very, very happy was the demand by uh, the... Gen C, that they were going to occupy World Bank and IMF. Because in terms of politics, you have to, to connect the foreign interest with the people who rule us, okay? And, and analyze very, very clearly why our leaders or these two factions are enslaved by foreign interests. And why they take, you know, orders from foreign interests, and they've never uh, uh, participated in any uh, public participation. Okay, but, you know, look at the case of uh, Haiti. Okay, we were not consulted. Look at the case of Palestine. You know, we were not consulted. When the courts say that police officers can't be, you know, uh, deployed in uh, Haiti. It's unconstitutional. Uh, that particular 
uh, court order is, uh, is, is disobeyed. And uh, in, in my books, uh, if you are going to talk about the rule of law, then any government that uh, subverts the, the rule of law is, is, is illegitimate. Uh, so it's very, very, very important that, uh, as uh, Meguna says, as the people, uh, as the people uh, demonstrate as mass action goes on, it's very, very, very important to make, you know, that connection because that connection is uh, is, is 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 important, uh, uh, you know, in in my view. So the uh, so the other thing, and this is uh, now talking to the uh, well. Before I do that, let me talk about task forces and they give uh, some history. Uh, I'm not going to give it the way Meguna has brilliantly given it in terms of dates and, and, and so forth because I haven't done that work. And uh, thanks, Meguna, for 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 articulating these popular popular revolutions and uh, uprisings so when it comes to task force in this country in this country there is a history of uh, destructing you know uh, uh, movements through the formation of ta task forces okay and i'll give you examples of uh, a few. When J.M. Kariuki was, was killed uh, March 2nd, I think that's when his body was discovered, 1975, uh, the system very quickly set up a parliamentary commission that was headed by somebody called Mwangale, Elijah Mwangale, uh, who was, uh, I think, MP for... Um, hmm, where Mukiza Kitui was MP, I don't know what uh, uh, that constituency is called. And it's, it's what that parliamentary commission did was to, to really diffuse the tensions, you know, diffuse the tensions because people were very angry about uh, JM's murder, uh, the universities uh, took to the streets, and uh, so to diffuse, you know, that particular popular unre uh, unrest, this was this commission was uh, quickly formed. When it's reported, uh, no nothing was done. Um, even the parliament tried to, you know, to, to change some of the uh, findings and nothing was done. They, then in 91, I think after the ethnic clashes in Rift Valley, there was a Kiwumi commission. Uh, a lot of time taken there. Uh, people having this hope that there was going to be a so solution, there was there were, the, those involved were going to be prosecuted and uh, jailed, nothing happened. Okay. Ouko, you know, uh, Robert Ouko was killed, I, I believe, 1990. Uh, there was what was called the Troon uh, Commission. You know, they brought uh, a, a, this uh, British guy from Scotland Yard, you know, to deal with, uh, to do the investigations, and then there was... Uh, a commission uh, chaired by the late uh, Chief Justice uh, Kishiru, uh, uh, Richard Quach was 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 in that commission as well, and it it was a board you know commission actually you know and the more you saw exactly where that commission was headed, and it disbanded, and. Uh, those who are suspected of uh, 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 Oko's murder were arrested, you know, they were never charged and there were no, you know, no uh, prosecutions. Uh, I think a lot of the millennials and 
millennials who remember the the work commission or even the gen c i think this is 2007 after those those uh, that election there was the work commission okay and when when you when when you look at all those commissions this the common denominator in my view is that they were used to diffuse uh, popular uprisings, you know, to, uh, to, 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 to make sure that the public anger, you know, dissipated. And uh, that, that will be it. And, and they, they use these tax forces, you know, like the Uko thing, if uh, those of you remember, Hoko was supposed to have shot himself in the leg and doused himself with uh, uh, acid or, and burned himself. Uh, that's, that was basically the, the theory that the government, uh, you know, uh, advanced. So task forces, commissions of inquiry, whenever there are issues, uh, and Miguna made this point, you know, who appoints them? You know, it's it's the, the culprits, the people that we suspect are the criminals between what has happened. Okay, so it's 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 a, we should you know we should we should uh, you know you know reject them. The other thing that is historical uh, in terms of demonstrations and mass action over years is the fact that the criminal elements. Uh, people have talked about goons. They have talked about uh, uh, criminals. Uh, what we have known all along is that within the police force, there is always a criminal gang, and that gang invariably is, is reports to the president and not uh, to their. Uh, they are superiors, and and uh, they have been dangerous. You know, those of you who, who are of my generation will remember the the famous Gorokos. You know, uh, they were supposed to to be to be taking care of the uh, cattle wrestling, wrestling. Yes, um, in some in certain areas. Uh, they didn't do that. In fact, they spent a lot of time in the 70s trying to intimidate President Moy uh, to resign. And uh, they were involved in what was called the Change the Constitution movement uh, during that period so that President Moy would not automatically uh, succeed Jomo Kenyatta in the event he died in office. And the others, you know, you must have heard of Kwekwe, you know, the flying squad. And even the current one, I think, is called Rhino. They have, uh, you know, names. And the politicians themselves have militia, okay? You, have, you must have heard of Raila's uh, men in black, okay? You must have heard, or you might not have, but a lot of people of my generation would know that in 1997, uh, Ngumo had a militia called Jesh Lamze that terrorized us during the mass action during that period. So when the president talks about criminals and uh, and the gangs, he is uh, not telling the truth. And I, I honestly, I don't think uh, well, if he tells the truth, it must be my accident. And even that one, I wouldn't believe it. So the the, the gangs uh, and 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 the Gen C have seen this clearly that these people uh, join uh, the demonstrations and they do stuff and the police seem to you know to protect them and so the the, the of course they are dis deployed to completely. Uh, make people angry against the peaceful demonstrators because they'll say, oh, these people are destroying property. You know, they, they, 
they, they are stealing and so forth. And it's wrong for us to accept that dialogue or that argument because a government that cannot protect property and lives actually is illegitimate. And that's a legal position as well, a political as, as well as a political one. If you are in government uh, and you cannot support, um, I mean, um, protect lives and the property of the citizens, then you are illegitimate. And there is a lot of evidence that we have seen, where the police, you know, watch as people, uh, you know, commit commit crimes. So, so, so this this narrative, this narrative about gangs and whatnot, okay, if the state was actually protecting the demonstrators from the gangs and making sure that the gangs don't uh, uh, steal or destroy property, then, then, then I'll be persuaded. But they are the ones who resurrect them because those gangs are always, you know, there. I mean, we've all known about uh, Mungiki, for example, all right, so so that narrative should not should not actually uh, you know be uh, uh, accepted. But I just wanted to finish by uh, you know celebrating the JNC for uh, expressing you know the the anger you know the. Uh, uh, you know, uh, protesting, you know, this uprising, or this revolution. Uh, and I look at it also as a generation that is also telling the government that they have to respect constitutions, they have to respect the rule of law, that they have to respect the human rights of, 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 of Kenyans. And, and, uh, and they are talking about the material interests of, of, of the youth and, and, and the Kenyans. And that's politics of issues for me. And I think it's, it's very, very important. And I think it should be, uh, you know, continued. Uh, uh, the the JNC will have to decide, and I'm sure probably they have already decided, because I know uh, they have political parties and social movements. Um, uh, that particular generation. So, so, so basically, uh, we we don't need to, you know, to advise you. You know, it's uh, it's, it's it's your movement. Uh, we glorify it for the reasons that I've uh, have given. Go ahead and decide on your political and ideological positions. Uh, make sure you know you continue you know, making your political demands and watch out for politics of division through ethnicity, you know, the, the, the factions you are dealing with be very good at organizing uh, politics on the basis of ethnicity and, uh, and the monetization. And, and also they know they have the backing of foreign interests. So those are some of the things you have to, you know, uh, you know, to watch out. Uh, watch out that narrative, people coming to say, uh, oh, well, you know, uh, just work with this faction. Um, the dialogue we are being invited to is a monologue, uh, but to obviously expose you to either manipulation or bribes or whatever. So I, I think uh, I salute, uh, you know, your, you know, mass action. And I just wanted to finish. Uh, Kachoka asked me to comment on uh, Article 241 of the, uh, of the Constitution, that is the deployment, uh, deployment of the military under that particular section, uh, Article and a paragraph. I think that, in fact, the 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 paragraphs 
They use the wrong paragraph, all right, okay? Because, uh, and even the ones they try to use, we, we, we didn't have an emergency or disaster, okay, in the country. Uh, constitutional mass action under 37, Articles 37 of the Constitution cannot be called an emergency or a disaster. Nor can it, the other C, that uh, paragraph C that uh, uh, Kashoka was, was talking about, about Parliament, you know, giving approval, it, it also says that the military may be deployed to restore peace in any part of Kenya affected by unrest or instability but only with the approval of the National Assembly. I don't agree that the mass action that were constitutional and that invoked the Constitution and the rule of law uh, can be described, described as unrest or even instability. I think this one is like when you have uh, some areas, and I think you have some some areas in the Rift Valley where there are such deployments. Uh, but what was happening, uh, you know, you know, in the last few weeks was not unrest or instability. It was peaceful. It was young people expressing their anger constitutionally, uh, exercising their freedom of expression, assembly, movement. Uh, so, in my opinion, what we are being prepared for is a, a, a declaration of state of emergency, which is uh, under 58, Article 58 of the, uh, you know, of the 58 of the Constitution. And that, when you look at that, uh, you know, provision, uh, I think it's 58, yes, it is. When you look at that uh, that uh, article of the Constitution, uh, <clears throat> you will find, yeah, it's called State of, state of Emergency. Uh, you, 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 you will find that the person who does it, okay, the, uh, the, it's the president, okay, who declares it, uh, that, you know, uh, state of emergency. And of course, it lasts for 14 days, then it can be extended by parliament for, you know, uh, two months. And also, it's, it's, uh, it can, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's subjected to uh, uh, legal action. You know, the Supreme Court, could may decide on the val validity of the declaration of state uh, state of uh, emergency, and that means that citizens can, of course, go to the to the to Supreme Court and uh, challenge the uh, validity uh, of this uh, state of emergency. But I, I I I think that's probably where we are headed, and we should be, uh, you know, uh, you know, prepared for it. Uh, but even if there is that declaration, as I was said, the conditions are also pretty, 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 uh, uh, you know, strict in terms in terms of the timelines, uh, in terms of uh, the, you know, the 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 challenge. So I'll stop there, and uh, thank you very much, you know, for uh, listening to me. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Harry. And um, yes, just a few a comment and some few questions before I open now the floor to everyone to just ask questions. Uh, Dr. Miguna mentioned uh, not having knowledge or no, having to be really just, you know, not, um, you know, having knowledge uh, beforehand about the armory and was... Uh, you know, suggesting that it would be difficult for the, you know, the the, the average population to know where this is, and and and, and so if there were comments uh, 
uh, around or concerns that even the parliament, when it, uh, the, the demonstrators say they were going to occupy it, that it was indeed understaffed. And uh, of course, this is the government to come out and um, you know, say something about it, but it, there is an impression that probably the police were not really well prepared, prepared or did not want to. So it was more of, it could be also just a setup. And there's also some news that was going on about uh, the CCTV of the parliament not being uh, found. So these are all information that are really causing anxiety in the population when they think, OK, is there something being hidden? So probably it would be good for, people, for, for the concerned or the, one, the people who have the mandate to also really inform the citizens so that citizens do not need to have um, suspicions. So the question I have for you, so uh, regarding the deployment of the military, uh, as we saw, okay, in your opinion, you say what happened is not exactly an, an arrest or instability. And we saw that the approval was uh, from the parliament was actually uh, retrieved after, which was not in line with it. And so what can we do about it at this point? Do we, are we going to, are the citizens just going to, you know, wait for it to take the course that it's taking, or is there a way of actually retrieving it back so that we don't have the military deployment, uh, you know, on the side, uh, because that is also causing anxiety in the population. If you can answer to that, then the second question, uh, I see your, your, your mic, Kingsby. The second question is, uh, the um, yesterday the ruling party and the opposition uh, decided that they're going to have, form a government of national unity. Does the ruling party legally still have the mandate to do that? Over to you, Dr. Terry, the two questions. Yeah, I, I, I think I tried to explain uh, uh, the, the, uh, the article, this article 241, uh, that was, uh, you know, uh, used and uh, you have already said that even the so-called approval they got was uh, what we call uh, retrospective they shouldn't they didn't go to to parliament under that particular paragraph before they did what uh, they did uh, and I was just arguing that what they, there is no way uh, what was happening could be described as emergency or disaster or unrest or instability. It was a constitutional uh, expression, you know, by the young people. And they stayed, they actually, you know, used the supreme law to make those demands. Okay. So they have to be praised for, you know, for doing that. Okay. Uh, and as to as to you know as to uh, about the armory that you raised it's it's a uh, it's not even a, a a matter of our concern it's blatant lies okay blatant lies that 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 the, the people who are so peaceful you know were also raiding uh, uh, an armory you know uh, in 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 parliament and uh, they were preparing for a coup d'etat. Okay, uh, it's Kimbaki who used to say, uh, and I think he said that, and everybody remembers what what he said when his election, uh, uh, 1988, when he was winning during the Q elections and the uh, presiding officer in, uh, in Madhio, uh, in Odaya, wanted actually to declare the person who was losing uh, uh, the the winner, and the Kibaki told the presiding officer, "You know, my friend, even uh, rigging elections uh, requires intelligence. You know, and you don't seem to have any intelligence. Those lies that are being told uh, about the Gen Z are lies, and they are at lies that are being told by people who are not intelligent. Okay, they." 
they they are Italian. They, and uh, I, 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 I think the regime will keep on lying and lying uh, until you accept lies, you know, as uh, as as, as uh, uh, truth. And that's that's that that would be that would be my position. And I think. Mikuna also had a brilliant case about it. He asked brilliant questions about it. Okay, what has happened? And there were those questions he was asking, uh, anchoring them, you know, on the uh, the state's responsibility to re- to protect our lives and the property. Okay, why 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 haven't they investigated? Okay. So, so I, I think, you know, that that would be my, uh, uh, you know, uh, position. Uh, this, 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 uh, this, this uh, invocation of, uh, you know, two forty one. In my view, as I said, is to prepare us uh, so or to test the waters, as as we say it. To see how we would react, you know, to the deployment of of uh, you know of 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 the military, and I've already ex- explained that if that happens, we should be prepared to challenge it, uh, you know, uh, uh, because you know the the only way. Uh, uh, I can see uh, in the old days, of course, a state of emergency would be declared and there were no limitations and there were no constraints. So, uh, and then people will be uh, basically intimidated that way. Uh, and all states want to create fear. Okay, so as we go forward, we should remember uh, one, what uh, Comrade w- w- um, Julius Wajira has always said, you know, you lose your fear, they lose their power. Okay, so you know that 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 will actually be uh, our position, and we we need to explain it uh, in, to you know to um, agency. We we'll have to explain it to you know, parents, friends, everybody, uh, that there will be, you know, uh, uh, challenges at some point, uh, as I've said, they they might uh, challenge, uh, you know, their movement on the basis of ethnicity. Uh, you know, we have heard this, you know, oh, this is a cool, this, or this is this, or these people, uh, whatever, and uh, you, I've I've seen also that the uh, uh, ethnic militias that were uh, on parade in Eldoret. Those are the kind of things that uh, you know we should uh, uh, pay attention to. Um, and I just wanted to end by, uh, you know, the te- you, you know. Reminding people who remember the demonstrations that were, were taking place in the world, uh, Paris, Seattle. There was a guy, a young man in that demonstration, and the JNC have have really been fantastic in their placards and uh, you know uh, uh, slogans and their demands. And they have also been uh, fantastic in their humor. So this guy was demonstrating. Uh, he had a T-shirt where he was basically telling, you know, the uh, the ruling elite in the world, you know, that at that point the population of the world was six billion, mm? and uh, and he said, you know, you. You are just uh, six, uh, sixty thousand, I think he said, but we are six billion, okay. And I think that's the the, the position, me, you know, Meguna was making that popular uprisings and where people are involved, all people are involved, 
and they are peaceful. Uh, they are unstoppable. And so I wanted to end on that note in answering your questions. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Ray, for your response. Uh, Kinsman, please take a go, and then we open the, the session uh, for, for Q&A. I, I think mine was just um, an addition of to what Dr. Ray, as uh, uh, Dr. Mutunga has, spoke, uh, has touched on and what also Dr. Neguna spoke about. 